Hump day is a fast approaching and that means racing on Wednesday night heads to Happy Valley and we have a nine race program this week and an interesting card in front of us. We've got experts in the studio of course to try and help find us a winner or three along the way and joined by Paul Lally and Tom Wooden. Tom, what can we look forward to? Race number five, Mark, is the main events in terms of the Happy Valley so card. Of course, it's a class two, 1650, the Iwo Challenge Cup. Horses like Money Catcher, who's been somewhat out of sorts. So he lines up there, taking on moments in time. And Mr. Ascensi, Helene Feeling and Shil Chi being quite an interesting first starter in the eighth race uh, by the name uh, of uh, out of the Jamie Richards uh, uh, barn. Magic Control, who uh, looked good when he won in Australia last. Had a good name in Australia too, didn't mm. he? Archo, Nacho, Nacho. yeah. Pity they changed it. But anyway, they won't worry if he wins. Uh, Paul, there were no jackpots on the weekend, but you can spice things up Wednesday night, surely. Yeah, there's a couple there. Uh, 300,000 going into the second double trio and also 2.4 million uh, going into the uh, six-up win bonus as well. So there's a couple of goodies there. Before we get into a happy valley, Chartin on Tuesday morning saw a number of well-credentialed horses uh, trial. Two group races to go for the season, the Premier Cup and the Premier Plate over 14 and 1800 respectively. Comes up on the 23rd of June and here we have Tom at the front end, California Spangle. At the back is a much improved Stay our city branch. Yeah, and he was uh, well and truly uh, tailed off here, but you can see he's been uh, ridden along over those uh, final stages. California Spangle there are just uh, edged out of it late by a Top Gun, and they really cleared out on the rest. Uh, California Spangle was up on the pace. Top Gun, a bit disappointing last start, Paul, so interested to see what they, they do with him next time round. Yeah, exactly, and uh, California Spangle just going for his uh, paces there as well, and uh, his 5G patch out the back runs on into a sort of a midfield 6-7 position, didn't he, in the end? So, um, yeah, he just did what he had to do, 5G patch. He's a real stayer, and you can see he was really pushed out, though, but, look, he responded OK. Yeah, he did uh, down the outside there. You'd say when it uh, gets up to, to 1,800 metres for his, his next start, coming back, of course, from the uh, the champions in Chater, over 2,400 metres, that 1,800's a, a distance yeah. that probably is a, a bit short of what we normally see him at his, at his best. Yeah, exactly. Look, he's, he sort of was looking at that Group 1, wasn't he? So coming back to 1,800 is not going to be totally ideal for him. Still a long way away, and we'll preview it closer, yeah. but 1,800 suits La City Blanche better than him. Yeah, it seems to, uh, although he was pushed out in this trial as well. So both those two horses have been extended out, and now it's uh, obviously a good training performance to bring them back. I think a typical sort of trial from La City Blanche, we always see him get well out of his ground. We do. 23rd of June, you can pencil that down for the final two group races of the Hong Kong season. Nine races at Happy Valley Wednesday night for meeting number 80. And it's on the B course. We have the first getting underway at 6.40. The two races we focus on, the Class 2 over the 16.50 and also the Class 3 good quality sprint, Class 3 over 1,000 metres. Race number five, the Class 2 trophy race has money catcher on the class drop. Visor off, the blinkers go back on. Telecom Fighters is a seven-time course and distance winner. Moments in Time has Group 1 racing next to his name. Flaming Rabbit comes to Happy Valley for the first time. Elaine Feeling has won two from four course and distance. Chilchibi missed a race on the 5th of March. Lame left four was the reason. Outgate has placed two from two this grade. Yellowfin won over the 1650 at the Valley two starts ago. And Splendid Living off the scene since January. He had a lame left four issue which has kept him away. Three trials to prepare for the fifth race, uh, Paul. And there's a bit of pace in this race. The two, the four, the three, the eight and the nine all like to roll forward, as does the one. And the ten, splendid living as well. So, look, it's just going to be um, an absolute um, fight to the first uh, bend, I think, to get to get those positions. So, I think moments in time will eventually get in. But they're going to go lickety split early, I think, with Telecom Fighters, Alice Wong aboard. Uh, uh, Flaming Rabbit will want to go forward as well. Splendid Living has led in the last time, and Yellowfin's drawn one, and he led all the way in the 16.50 over the course and distance. So, well, we'll just hold on to our hats for the first 400, I think. Do 1,650 metres. Might have to check out the class record if uh, they all turn it on from the start of the race. One horse that won't turn it on from the start of the race, but is likely to be charging home if they do fly along up front, is Chil Chibi. Nick with his jockey, Jerry Chow. Jerry, uh, really good class two on Wednesday night in Happy Valley. You're going to ride Chil Chibi, who's returning to, to the track, and you must be looking forward to getting on him again around the, the tight turns. Yeah, really happy to get on him again. And last time, just got a little problem, but after that, he's fixed it. I trial him and get up him. He's feeling well now, and looking forward. I went back and had a look at that trial. I mean, for the majority of it, he didn't really look to be going anywhere particularly 
quickly, but that last little bit of the trial must have been quite impressive. Yeah, and he always tried just so so. He he's didn't show too much in the trial, and he's always did. And, and I think, but his form, I think, is, is being good now. Certainly has been. Um, let's just go back and, and sort of uh, wind our memories back to the four-year-old series. He ran in a couple of legs of that. I mean, he ran with plenty of credit, didn't he, really? I mean, he ran some really good races. Yeah, in a four-year-old series, he, he did a very good job. And, but he always got a little problem and, and could, could make him look upside down. And, 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 but now he's starting getting better again. And in a cast two, the... I think he got a competitive chance. He certainly does get competitive in the grade. His run when last seen, obviously I know he was withdrawn on his most in rec like recent engagement, but when he ran fourth that day, you didn't get much luck, Jerry, did you? I mean, he always had to travel that little bit wide, but he closed off strongly. Yeah, and he, the last time he went fourth, and the steepest free track, and we needed to come wide, and bit, it's difficult for him, but he's still running home very strongly. We know he loves it around Happy Valley, but again, the, the barrier has not been overly kind. You've got gate number 10, so what's sort of the plan in your mind to try and overcome that? I guess he doesn't necessarily go forward, does he? Yeah, because uh, the pace, I think, depends on the pace. But, and look, the pace, I think it will be strong, and I think good for him to just settle behind because he just off a, a, a few times and, and just swing quietly and then hope him to run home strongly. They get on very well, do Jerry Chow and Chil Chibi Paul. Jerry's rides on Wednesday night, they're not huge numbers wise, but there's certainly some chances amongst them, isn't there? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, Super Joy and Fun's been racing really well at uh, Happy Valley. I don't know about Happy Soul, I thought might have won his race. Uh, and the other two are racing okay. Yeah, amazing. Ace has drawn to get a, a good run. Super Joy and Fun, of course, have got a, a really awkward barrier draw, barrier number 12, which uh, I think he's good enough to overcome, but it is going to be more of a more of a difficult assignment for him, I feel. Four rides at Ford Jerry as Super Joy and Fun returns to where he's raced well at, at the Valley. We head on to Group 1 Racing here. Tom, moments in time in the Champions and Chater. He set up the pace for the 225.62, comes from Group 1 Racing to a Class 2. Yeah, so he's going to strike it much easier here as well. Zach Purton's one from one on the horse. Of course, he was uh, tackled by uh, Rebels Romance coming down the side when he tried to put a bit of a break in them in Lyle, but uh, William Buick was uh, awake to uh, what was going on there and uh, just wasn't good enough on the, the day to uh, beat a quality horse like him. But he still stayed on well enough, just came to the end of his run here uh, late, uh, Paul, but this is a, a more suitable race for him. Yeah, definitely, and he's a two-time winner at Happy Valley as well, so he's a horse that does like the valley. One of those two wins, Paul, is this replay upcoming. This was over the 1,650 metres also. Uh, he's in this race, uh, as we see what he's done at the Valley, as opposed to Chartin. His record at the Valley is very good. Yeah, it is. So, look, four starts there. He's, he's won a couple. He's just been beaten in the, one of them as well. And when he did run down the track, that was earlier on in his career. So he, he's really going well, and he's had a really good um, season here. Here is the replay, Tom. Now, telecom fighters will go forward. Outgate goes forward. Mr. Ascendancy tucked in behind the leader and moments in time up outside of them. He goes to £133, up from 126 for the drop from Group 1 to Class 2. Yeah, so he carried 123 and 125 to a win going back uh, three and four starts ago. This is going to be more difficult for him. I feel Telecom Fighters, he's got the, the claiming rider on, but whether he can absorb any of that pressure up front, I'm, I'm not totally convinced by that. Look, Outgate, I thought, wasn't the worst of all. He's, he's drawn it relatively well coming into this. He had every chance last time out behind Cheng Cheng Glory, who we know has been in great form. Yeah, exactly. He He's going well. He's going to be right there. And uh, he, he, I think he can just tuck in behind the post. And that trial that Outgate was into, he was ridden back in the trial and swept down the outside, as opposed to this race, Paul. Flaming Rabbit, first look at the smaller circuit. Outgate, we've uh, talked about. Helene Feeling ran in the four-year-old series. He's had one start since, and that was also at Sha Tin. His record at the Valley is good. What about him against uh, some good Class 2 horses this week? I, I think he could win this because I, I just think he's going to get the race run to suit. He's had four starts at the Valley, as you mentioned. He's won two and he's been placed in the other two. So he's a horse that does uh, like the Valley. He's, he's gone through that four-year-old series. He's come out the other side with his fifth. Draw nice in four. He can just let the speed go. Yeah, he can. He can let all those horses that like to, to go forward to breeze on by. He probably might end up, if that is the case, a little bit maybe mm -hmm. further back in the run, but uh, he should be able to run off a, a good tempo, I think, and I, I agree with Paul. He's my idea of the winner here.
That is Helene Feeling, who's going to be well supported in the selections shortly. Does Yellowfin make it in anywhere, Tom? Because he too is an on-pace runner. Yeah, look, he was one back, one out of a small field uh, at Chartin on the all weather last time out behind Adderfield. This is his run here at uh, Happy Valley, which he was able to uh, kick off the front. Now, Romantic Lau's come out of this race and, of course, uh, has uh, since gone and won. It was a small field last start. Paul, he was up and around them at the, the 600, up outside the leader at the turn, but couldn't go with... With Adafilla, I think he's made a pretty strong class two race here, so uh, I'm sort of inclined to leave him out. Yeah, I, look, I was a bit the same. I, I did put him in for fourth because I just thought he, he might tuck in just behind um, the telecom fighters, but I, I tend to agree. I think this is quite a rich race. This. With the map saying good to fast, Paul, is it Swooper City at the end? I think so. Look, I, 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 and I think Helene Feeling will get this race run to suit. Um, so I've got him on top. Now I'm going to put moments in time in because I think he can sit just off the pace. He'll get, I think he'll eventually get in. Chil Chibi, another one of those sweepers, and then Yellowfin and, and just in behind. So like it was between him and Outgate uh, for fourth, but I ended up just putting Yellowfin in. Six, three, seven, and nine. Yeah, same four numbers. Uh, I probably would have been more inclined to go with Outgate in the end, but uh, put Yellowfin in for, for fourth. I went six, seven, three, and nine. Uh, Helene Feeling coming into with this. Uh, he's got a very good course and distance record. He's never missed top four, so inclined to go with him here. Chil Chibi goes in. Of course, he missed the Queen Mother Memorial Cup with an injury. He's had a few lameness issues now, has uh, Chil Chibi, the four year old. Uh, moments in time, and uh, Yellowfin goes in, but I've probably had my time again. I'd stick in Outgate, uh, Angus Chung, and uh, Tony Cruz off a, a good recent trial. But at six, seven, three, and at nine. This is where we pause on Racing to Win. The preview for Happy Valley on Wednesday night will continue with a look at a later race right after this. Welcome back to Racing to Win as we preview Hong Kong racing twice weekly on the show. And Happy Valley Wednesday night is the focus of the midweek edition. And the break has just been on, which means it's reveal time, Paul. Yes, uh, we're going to early this time, race two, number two, which is uh, Comet Splendido. Uh, we can see the run here now. He's getting back to uh, some of his uh, form now. He's only won one. He's been placed on numerous times this horse, but he's really well rated on that, that win. Was off a rating of 69. He's now down to this rating in the 50s. And you can see he was momentarily held up as well. And once he got into the gap, he, he just finished off really nicely. In fact, he ended up... Uh, just uh, finishing off well there. So I think with that run under his uh, belt, we can have a look at the head on how the, the, the sort of the gap closed there and uh, he was a little bit unlucky. So as such, I think he can win. That is uh, the last run reminder. You can see uh, Satirical, one of them, and uh, Atomic Beauty in the lead. They're both last start winners, the Satiricals, and Comet Splendido just in behind them. So he is the last run reminder for Paul. It's nice and easy. Two little ducks, race two, number two, Comet Splendido. On to race number eight. This is the Violet Handicap over the 1,000 metres, and Humble Star is on the class drop. Magic Control, who Tom talked about at the start of the show, is number two, Hugh Bowman on board for Jamie Richards. We've got Fast Serve, who won second up at his first prep. Midori Glory, he was a debut Hong Kong. Kong winner goes up six pounds for the victory. Better draw for Heroic Master. Happy United is a horse that is a three time course and distance winner. Youthful Spirits back in trip on a six day backup and telecom speed. And Colourful Prince Paul round out the eighth. Good to fast for the 1650 before the break. Good to fast on the back after the break. Yeah, I think this one's going to be running a bit of pace as well with Colourful Prince, Fast Serve. Both got really good pace. Harmony Fire likes to lead as well. Uh, Youthful Spirits, um, he took off last time and uh, went too quick. Uh, Telecom Speed likes to go forward as well. So it's going to be raced quite quickly now. Midori Glory was in the trail when, when he won, but I think he'll be a little bit further back uh, with this pace in the race. Uh, major control is the first starter here in Hong Kong. More from the boys in just a moment. Nick is back though, talking to Jamie Richards about his two runners, Magic Control and Happy United. Jamie, Magic Control is a newcomer for you in, in race number eight. Quite an intriguing looking horse. He had a, a pretty decent level of form in Australia. Yeah, he did. He's a uh, horse that uh, arrived up here with some good form in, in Melbourne, proper form. Um, and he seems to be, you know, acclimatising pretty quickly and, and uh, he's been trialling well. So um, hopefully he can do a good job for us here tomorrow night. Talking of those trials, went back through his record. He did have a trial around the valley. It was quite impressive in winning. Actually beat, uh, beat Fast Serve, who, who reopposes in this. So the Happy Valley trial looked very good. Yeah, his uh, trial at the valley was very good. He, unfortunately, he hasn't had a lot of luck since he arrived here. His first trial, he, he got loose. Um, 
then he trialled well up the valley and then in his next trial on the all weather he lost both of his front shoes when he jumped out of the barrier and we since sent him up to Chongfar and gave him a couple of quiet trials up there just to get his confidence back again um, and we feel as though he's in the, in the right sort of shape to head off to the races now so um, he's drawn well, uh, Hugh knows him, um, looks to be plenty of pace on paper so hopefully he can just get a nice run, it's never easy for the PPs to win first time out but um, ho hopefully he can run a nice race for us. You've got the, the tongue tie on as well. What was the sort of thinking behind that? Was there any sort of issue through his trials and track work that sort of made you think, well, maybe he needs this? Not really, just one less excuse that the horses have got. Um, most of them wear, wear tongue ties, so uh, it's something pretty simple, you know, pretty pretty regular for the stable. And for those that probably aren't too au okay fait with sort of his Australian form, being listed winner, Group 3 winner, he also won around Mooney Valley, so I know they're going the other way round, but in some respects that probably aids him in his cause to try and win at Happy Valley, doesn't it? Yeah, well, Mooney Valley is, as you say, the opposite direction, but it is a tight turning course. Um, he's not an overly big horse, uh, and he seems to have handled the valley well when he trialled there. So, uh, yeah, it's just, he's got good honest form down the, flight, uh, down the straight at Flemington as well. So there's plenty of options for him going forward, but we just thought this was a nice um, kick-off point for him. Yeah, 10 five, 3 pounds, I was going to ask you, has he been a, a, sort of a quick horse to, to come to hand, given his sort of size and stature? Yeah, he's uh, settled him pretty well. He's been eating well. Um, as I say, things didn't go sort of that smoothly for him. He's had a couple of little things that haven't been ideal, but um, we've given him the time and the owners uh, have been nice and patient and um, hopefully we can see him run well tomorrow night. Yeah, he certainly is an interesting horse on paper. And just um, your other runner, he's going to be joined by Happy United as well in the race. Obviously, he's a regular over these sort of trips. How's he? He's in, he's in good shape. Uh, he just had a quiet trial up at Chung Far after not racing very well down the straight here at Shart. And he's much more at home at, at the valley, but he's drawn a uh, bad gait. So uh, he's going to need a bit of luck. He might be a, a horse that has another run or two, but uh, maybe next season for him might be more suitable. But he is getting back down close to his rating where he has been competitive before. We've seen Happy United plenty of times. Paul, what have you made of Magic Control since he's been here? Yeah, look, they've been good. The last trial in particular was, was good up in Chung Fa. As Jamie said, it's never easy to win top of class three. He's got to carry 133. There's been a bit of, bit of hype around him, obviously coming with some good form from Australia, Flemington, Mooney Valley as such. He's had the four trials to get him ready. Um, look, I'm going to put him in. I'm not going to put him in on top, though, because uh, I just think he might be a little bit over bet. Yeah, that might be looking that way. He's coming off a rating of 77. You look at the form between him and Midori Glory. Midori Glory claimed off a, a rating of 63 with a lighter weight and was able to win first up. He's got 133 pounds. He had a little issue in the gates as well. And out of those two races in Australia, his last two, uh, three winners have come out of both of those races. So uh, some not bad form there. That is a magic control. On we go, Tom, to Youthful Spirits. This is last week where he went like a rocket. Uh, no, it's not. It's the race from two weeks ago. We raced last week over 1,200 metres and went like a rocket. This race was over the 1,000. Harmony Fire fourth, Heroic Master fifth and Happy United sixth. So he, he comes back in trip to the distance of this race. Yeah, and look, last week, Mark, he was just too quick in front. Uh, it was handlebars down and he was off and gone, whether he could be restrained or not. It was 23.65, uh, the, the standard time, and he went 23.22 and then 23. 232 when standards 226 so he just just went too crazy in front yeah he did there was, there was a better run there he, i mean he, to his credit he stuck on for fourth last time as well so look i will include him what about the the flat factor because as you said tom it was a really fast run last week yeah and so look he i don't know if he's one of those sort of keen going types so hopefully zach can sort of harness some of that energy and maybe if he can sit behind a couple of horses he might relax a little bit better but it was a very quickly one race have you seen much of him in track work since last week? No, he's been very quiet, so he's just taking it easy. We move on, to Paul, to Midori Glory. This was a good field, a bit similar to what we've got in this race on a Wednesday night. Perfect start to his uh, Hong Kong life. He was in behind the leader. Fast serve is going to be fitter also. Can the horse with a massive white blaze do it again? I think he can. I think he's, they, they were very generous. He's come off a good rate, uh, a nice rating, as uh, Tom said, 63. He's still um, up to this rating now of uh, 69. Uh, he only has to carry 125. He drew one here, got the perfect run, but he's drawn six, so he should, should get another run to suit. He yeah, just got it there over Beauty Waves, of course, so didn't he? He's clearly done well since his last start because he's put on 25 pounds since that run uh, 21 days ago. So uh, a bit to like about that first up run. 
And we go to a humble star, Tom. He's on the class drop. He comes into a grade where he's a multiple win, 135 pounds from gate one. Yeah, he was a bit slow away last time out behind a superb capitalist and uh, never really ran on, I thought. He's got barrier number one. Uh, hopefully he can jump away yet cleanly. He has uh, won twice over the 1,000 metres. In fact, probably 1,000 metres might be his best go. Yeah, it could, could well be, actually, the way that we've seen with him. And, look, he's, he, as you say, he's drawn one, but he's just got to give weight away to some of these uh, quite up-and-coming horses coming into this race. And we go, Paul, to a colourful prince. Now, he leads here. This was down in grade, so um, he's had a couple of runs since this win. One in Class 3 over the 1,200 on a yielding track at Chard 10, then an all-weather race last time. Would you prefer him in Class 4? Well, look, I prefer him if he could lead by himself, and I don't think he's going to in this race, because with uh, Harmony Fire and Fast Serve in the race, they, they will uh, serve it up to Califor Prince, I think. So as such, that, that's what worries me. Yeah, I agree with Paul. I think he's probably better down in grade as well. Uh, had the trail every chance, not interested here. He goes out. The horse he did beat there, Lee Master, came out at short odds and won at the start following Nat Paul, who wins a good sprint. Really good races. I'm going to go with Midori Glory, though. I thought he could make it two from two. was a nice win from him here on debut in Hong Kong. Uh, the first start of Magic Control has obviously got plenty of ability. Uh, he's drawn nicely in barrier four, so he goes in there for second. Youthful Spirits just being a little bit more restrained in this race. And far serve, he's only uh, been beaten once, two wins in a third, and he'll strip fitter for that last run of his. 5294. Same four numbers, just slightly in a different order for the top two. I'll go the first starter here, Magic Control, first up with a, a good draw into just how the, the race might unfold for Rahim. Uh, five, Midori Glory goes in off his uh, first up win over Beauty Waves. Youthful Spirits, hopefully he can settle better and a fast serve, the other one I don't mind, but he is drawn awkwardly here in barrier number 10 and T will get some company up on the pace here, one would think. Two, five, nine and four. That is the preview for race number eight from the boys. Reminder, all races are available on the website, hkjc.com. Click on audio and video for race-by-race race analysis. We're getting to the end of the show, Paul, and your best and long shot today with their names. You'll be reading horoscopes on the show next week. You've gone a comet into an astrologer. There you go. I didn't pick that up. Um, you only live once, so you've got to pick these up. So uh, I've got Comet Splendido on uh, top here. He's, uh, he, we've made him the last run reminder. We can have a longer look at that run here. Uh, he's just a well-rated horse here. That's the thing, you know. You've got to uh, you, you've got to look, look at that, and he's running well. He's off this 50 rating or 55, whatever he is now, and he's you know he's one off 69. So I think he's uh, he's ready to win this horse. Hugh Bowman from a low draw should get a perfect run just in behind. So we'll make him the best. Now the long shot astrologer. He's another well-rated horse. His last win was of 85. He's into a rating of 73. This will be his first start in blinkers at Happy Valley. Did race in them at Chartan last time and ran on really strongly, so uh, make him the long shot. Uh, we'll make the play in the big feature race, moments in time, Helene Feeling, till GB QQP. Could that be a popular segment on the show too? <laughs> race nine, number one, Red Hair King, uh, Tony Cruz and Hugh Bowman uh, teaming up here. Big run from this horse last time out, considering he was uh, nearly eating rice out of the Moon Coon restaurant, so heading around the first uh, turn, and uh, he covered a lot of ground uh, there and uh, stayed on really well, was beaten here by uh, Romantic uh, Lau. I think from a, a low draw, he can go one better. He's three pounds better off as well with uh, Romantic Lau, so I think he's the one to beat with Hugh Bowman on board again after that wide run last time out early. Uh, the Valley with Precise Express, who were found troubled and lost a whole lot of momentum coming around the turn last start, so he's race three, number seven, and uh, the play uh, in race three. Three, uh, race eight, sorry, uh, Magic Control, Midori Glory, and at Youthful Spirits in the Sprinting Affair. Spicy Gold was good last time, and he wound up late at the Valley and got pretty close. So I thought he could go one better with Alexi Bedell on board for Mark Newnham. Seven starts placed a couple of times. He comes out as the best. Me time, a little held up last time, but he won his best race in Hong Kong at uh, Happy Valley. That race was at Sha Tin, where he was held up. Thought he might get some sort of chance and the play race four. Happy for all, Sweet Diamond and Spicy Gold, six, eight and nine. Looking at the diary, a reminder, we're back on Saturday for further Twilight Racing with Trackside Live uh, coming up there. There's uh, a 3.30 Trackside Live. There's simulcast racing before then and then the final group race day of the season on the 23rd of June. So that has been Racing to Win, Tom, and then uh, plenty of races coming up at Sha Tin on Saturday. Yes, and well credential Griffin's coming up and looking forward to seeing Cormie Glorious in Class 3. He was very impressive last time, Cormie Glorious. I think he can win again. Thanks to the boys and thanks for you. That's been Racing to Win. We'll see you at Happy Valley for 9 from 6.40.